Welcome to the Tech Tour Part 2. Now, we knew after almost three years of No World Champs there was going to be a lot of tech, but we didn't expect there to be this much tech. Yeah, if you missed that first video, some pretty cool tech in there from Ceramic Speed and Kadex, and also Trim Techs with some new suits and a whole new range branded Christian Blumenfeld, so you go watch that now. But we're gonna carry on this tour with some more hot tech that we've seen at the Ironman World Champs. All right. One of the perks of getting to go and see athletes, you get to go to the sponsors' houses. We've just been at Precision Fuel and Hydration, and I've managed to grab one of these. This is their brand new 30 gram caffeine gel. It's not out yet, but I might be needing this on race day myself. I think it's gonna be a long day, apparently. I know this is a tech tour, but I spotted this incredible color behind me. And then I spotted this man, TJ. TJ, tell me what we've got behind us and a little bit about it. Yeah, so I'm TJ Eisenhardt. I'm the artist of this beautiful mural. Uh, this mural, I was hired by the city of St. George, which is where the Ironman World Championships is this year. And uh, yeah, they asked me to come work my magic and paint up some sweet positivity and you know, inspiring things for the athletes. So I love it. Well, you're certainly doing that. I mean, that just made me smile. But then I had to work out how to put it into the tech tour. And I found out that you have actually teamed up with Envy and you've made some decals. Tell us what we've got on this bike. Yeah, so I used to race all the time. And so I have a great relationship with Envy and uh, they've always been loving my art. And so it was an easy relationship. As soon as I got hired for the mural, I had the idea to call up Envy and be like, yo, we got to make decals to match the mural because I knew they have so many athletes and their wheels are the best in the triathlon game. <laughs> They're just the best in general. Uh, made here in Utah. They're awesome. And then they're even cooler with my one of kind decals. But yeah, these decals are really cool because they'll be you know available for the public to buy here in a few weeks. And what will be so cool about it is that everyone that raced this can then, then go online and buy these as a memento of what a really inspiring you know time doing this because if I was racing the World Championships event, I definitely would want something to commemorate it and how, I mean, it doesn't get cooler than to have custom decals on your wheels and then we pull up to any coffee shop anywhere, they're gonna be like, yo, wh what are those decals? And then you always will tell that story of, oh, it's from the Ironman World Championships. Well, you guys remember that crazy, incredible mural and this guy, don't think you can forget him. Well, he told us that GTN is better than GCN and he's apparently gonna make us a shirt to prove that. It's just working hard behind us, the skills and the energy of this guy, it's pretty cool. Here we go. GTN is, is. These weren't our words. These weren't our words. Way. Cooler. <laughs> I like where you're going with this. You guys with us? GTN is way cooler than GCN. Sorry, guys. <laughs> we love you, TJ. What's the GM? MBN. MBN. <laughs> We're making friends here with our with our partner channels, aren't we? All right, continuing on our tech tour, and this is not actually in the expo, but we were pretty excited about this when we heard about the launch in November last year, but we hadn't actually seen it in the flesh. It's called Race Ranger. And this is James Elvery, and he's the founder, owner of, of Race Ranger. It's a pretty novel concept, and I think you might like it. If you haven't heard about it before, we're gonna tell you a little bit about it. We will do an in-depth review of this and uh, I think we'll test it a little bit and do a full video on how it all works. But right now, let's just give you a little teaser. So, what is Race Ranger? So Race Ranger is an anti-drafting or drafting detection system. Um, helps athletes determine really accurately what the draft distance is and passes that information on to the referees as well. So as you imagine, that's pretty exciting for all triathletes because drafting is a perennial problem in non-drafting triathlon. So what this does, is you get these things, so you've got one on the front of your bike and one on the back of your bike, and when it gets in within range, so if you set it to 12 meter draft zone, when it gets within range, a little light on here, you'll see it's blue right now. That's because I'm within 12 meter range. If I go outside of that, it'll go red. 
And if I come back in, it'll go blue again. So when it's blue, you know the bike behind you is drafting or you're drafting the bike in front of you. It's a pretty cool concept. How did you come up with this? And is it something that we're gonna see at races like this year, next year, immediately, or is it still in the process? Yeah, um, long-term, long 10-year project for us. Um, we're professional triathletes, XSLs, Dylan McNeese and I, so um, yeah, we kind of understood the sport, but um, yeah, and the problem quite well, but had no idea how to fix it, and so, like anything, just uh, a lot of hard work and some common sense, and here we are. So they're finding the solution, and we're pretty stoked with this. I mean, I've just tried it, and it works pretty exceptionally. So let me show you exactly how this works. Right, we've put a we've put a tape measure down here, so it's directly behind the back of this bike. So this would be your draft zone, obviously. I've got this, which would be the front detection uh, that you would put on the front of another bike. So I'm gonna move away, and I'm gonna get you to focus on this uh, as I move away. So I'm moving down our tape measure. We're at two meters, three meters, four meters, five meters, six meters, seven meters. We've set it to 12 meter draft zone because we think that's what the draft zone should be at a bare minimum. We're at 11 meters now, it's still blue. 11.70, still blue, 11.80, still blue, 11.90, oh, and it's red. I'm exactly over the 12 meter mark. It is very accurate. There, it's on or it's off, it's on, it's off. And if I keep going back, it just stays red. So you know you're safe. So if you're riding here, you're safe. You go over that 12 meter mark and it's going blue. And you immediately know you're in the, you're in the draft zone. And of course, not just you know, the referee also knows. Because there's a neat bit of kit that comes with this that the referee's gonna carry. Let's go look at that. So not only do you get a very visual representation of whether you're in that draft zone or not with that light of the bike in front of you going red or blue, depending on where you are in that zone, there's a moto next to you, always a referee, isn't there, and he's gonna be holding this or wearing this. So basically, it's got a, is it like an iPad, a tablet? It's a tablet, yeah. yeah. So the tablet gets the information from these, and not only does it tell you whether you've been drafting or it actually collates a whole total time that you've been in a draft zone, outside a draft zone, and moving through a draft zone, and the referee can see that, and he can look at all the numbers around him and see who's the one really taking the piss, as it were. Uh, and then he can ride straight up to you and show you that card. He can also then mark it on there so that he's got a record of when he gave it to you, where he gave it to you. It's a, it's a referee's dream. It makes their job really easy. It also is gonna make racing a whole lot fairer. We're pretty excited about this. Like I said, there's gonna be a video coming up soon where Mark and I really test this out and GTN does a full in-depth review of how this thing is gonna work. We can't wait to see it on a race course. Thank you so much for showing it to us, James. Thanks, guys. Uh, and yeah, we'll see it at a race soon. Catch up soon. Have you ever wondered what it might feel like to run on the moon? I reckon it's gonna be something pretty much like this. I am currently running at 16 pounds less heavy than I actually am. So um, that is around six kilos, I think, if I've got the mass right. And this is the lever, or lever. And you might well have seen quite a few of the pros, like Laura Phillip, Flora Duffy, Sam Long, Matt Hansen. A lot of athletes have been using this. I've seen it on social. I've never had a chance to try it out myself. And we bumped into these guys and thought, well, let's come and see what it's all about. It's a pretty simple system. It's just fixed onto the treadmill. And if you want to feel good, I'd recommend it. But all seriously, you know, it's obviously helped for rehabbing after injury or keeping that volume up and just taking a bit of the weight out of your legs. Okay, this is exciting. I have just literally bumped into Jeff Schneider, who is in charge of the product and marketing of the Kadex bike. Basically, otherwise known as the bike Christian, has been leaking for the last few days and we're gonna see him racing tomorrow. Now, Jeff, can you tell me, what is this that we're seeing? It looks something so different from the first glance. So for us, this is the first entry into a full triathlon specific frame. Uh, and, and when I say frame, it's frame, fork, stem, bars, mm -hmm. everything the all bike. lumped in. Yeah. And, and it, it really, you know, Christian is our only KDEX athlete. Like every KDEX product we make, Christian will race on. And so when we started working with Christian on fit of the bike, it just made sense that we needed to kind of come up with a new system that gave him a better fit for his position to make him more efficient. I mean, the clips that he's been releasing, like I know he rides with really high arms. Has that been sort of 
brought into the, the design of it or? Some of it, yeah. I mean, they're, you know, most people aren't gonna ride with that kind of position. Mm. I mean, he's, I haven't, you know, I haven't seen what he's settled on for this yeah. event. At one point, he was literally so high yeah. that he couldn't even see the road in front and of him. that's what we were all asking. How's I he? think it was at 50 degrees straight Gosh. up. Yeah. So we do have some prototype bars that he's testing that are up and down yeah. and moving around. The production version will take you up to like 15 to 20 degrees yeah. uh, for right now. I'm not saying that won't change. Uh, it really depends on what, uh, what works best for the markets. But um, it, you know, his position, if you notice also, it's not just really up. He's really far forward on yeah. the bike. So getting him in a position where he can bring his whole position where he's more efficient was critical. And that's something he hasn't been able to accomplish on other bikes that he's ridden. And from very, like I say, first glance, I've not even seen it properly myself, but the, you, can you explain what's the, what's the science and the engineering behind the front forks? Because that's the most dramatic part that I think people are kind of, well, yeah, the whole I shape mean, of it, like it, it talked me through it. So we're, cer we're certainly not making claims that we've done anything before anybody else. Others yeah. have done this dual mm -hmm. s stanchion or dual leg forks. But what we did is when we looked at the bike, how can we make it more efficient for long-term aerodynamics, but it's also, it's part of it is moving the air through the bike, not just around the rider and the bike, because if, if you understand things like F1 and aerodynamics, sometimes the fastest way is to get the air through the product. So you'll notice the stance on it, it's quite a bit wider, yeah. um, but that's also part of the function of what we're doing with the bars and the ability to adjust the bars in and out. Uh, it narrows down to even, these guys pack their bikes. So it also narrows down to how quickly and easily they can pack the bike safely. Um, and all those are factors that we looked at. But I think the bigger story about the frame is they're on the bike for a long time. Mm -hmm. So we wanted to make sure that we could get them the hydration, the nutrition, and all the other things that they need without pulling them out of their aero position. Right. Um, so others have done that. Mm -hmm. We've just tried to do it more efficiently. Put it in locations where they can easily access, that they can get the product quickly, hydrate, and then focus on their ride. So where is the hydration? Can you? It's 100% yeah, it. hydration. You'll have just, you know, they have a strop. There's a bladder down in the main part of the frame. Okay. Above that is a bento box. Yeah. And below that, we actually have a very quickly and easily accessible toolkit. So if they do have that uneventful yep. flat or whatever, Long it's distance. very quickly. Mm -hmm. They don't have to remove bladders, take things out to get to those tools. They just click a thing on the side, pull the toolkit out, pop it back in, and then go. Um, so, you know, you'll still see Christian probably, especially with the weather we're having right now. Yeah. He'll still have bottles behind him yeah. that he can just quickly pop those out, squirt them into the hydration system to access his water, his liquids. And you say he's the only athlete on it, but I gather we are going to see a few more athletes in a group in sub seven on this bike? Yes, so so everybody I think knows about sub seven. Mm -hmm. uh, the main target for sub seven is, is we have a, a group of athletes who will draft him during the sub seven event and they will all also be on those bikes at that event. Yeah, and when as the general public, can we potentially get our hands on this incredible looking bike? Well, that's gonna be later in the year. So, but we will, we will do a pre-order once, once we go live. Mm -hmm. So after sub seven, when Christian does the event, that's where we're, here you'll see he's racing on the, the bike with Overachieve, which is our kind of brand, um, instead of saying prototype, yeah. it's our brand prototype. Yeah. Um, so the bike says Overachieve, but when he gets to the, to the Sub 7, he will have the full Christian Blumenfeld uh, limited edition graphics, mm -hmm. and the other riders will be on, on the graphic production version. And very quickly, because we've only had a glimpse of them, but. Tell me about the wheels as well, because I know they are new, and yeah, you, yeah, you've been working on these for a while. So when we launched KidX originally, we were developing TT wheels for our, uh, initially for our Pro Tour teams, but also we've worked with people like Tim Van Burkle, Sam Appleton, and all these guys on developing the wheels. So they've been racing them for quite some time. Christian and Gustav have been racing on the wheels now for the last couple of years. Mm -hmm. I think Gustav was the first one that we signed. Um, under Giant, but also a KDX. Um, these wheels are now new. I mean, obviously disc brakes are becoming more and more prevalent yeah. in the cycling industry. So they are disc brake compatible, mm -hmm. a whole new hub development with ceramic bearings, um, new hub internals that we're developing. And then we are taking our, what we've done with KDX and we're going hookless. Okay. We're, we're big proponents of hookless and tubeless. I think as the market 
starts to understand the benefits, they're, they're going to I think it's going quickly. that way, isn't it? It's, it's getting yeah. there yeah. rapidly. So. Yeah. And obviously the, the disc wheel we've seen Christian on, but there's, a, there's other, what iterations have you got of these new so wheels? So when we first launched, we had the disc rear with a four spoke front, which mm -hmm. is about 50 millimeter deep. Um, Christian may or may not this weekend, depending on how the weather is, uh, we'll be racing on a rear four spoke version yeah. of the wheel. It's a little bit deeper. It's about a 65 millimeter deep uh, rim profile. Okay. Plus, we have some new shapes to the rim that we've done just to add better for aerodynamics. Um, so yeah, so the, a rider will have the potential to have on a non-windy course, a disc with a four spoke or mm -hmm. on a very windy course, such as like Kona, they can run the four spoke in the yeah. rear and in the front and have almost the same aerodynamic benefits that they would get out of a full Yeah, disc. that's going to be super popular for Kona, isn't I th it? Yeah. I think so. Awesome. Cool. Well, exciting. We can't wait to see Christian race. Yeah, <laughs> Hope all goes so, well. Go <laughs> Thanks, Christian. Jeff. Yeah. <laughs>new tech here but some of which we can't get our hands on we can just get a literal glimpse of you might have noticed if you follow some of the athletes that run in on shoes closely that there's a new shoe in the making and there's going to be a couple of athletes here at the St George Ironman World Champs running in them you're going to see Nicola Spirik in this iteration it's still a prototype and according to the designer these are a very different iteration to what we've seen so far I'm excited to get them on my feet but I think I'm going to have to wait a little while they're going to be coming out in a, an official release in the summer I think so keep your eyes peeled for the race on Saturday and see how those athletes do. You know that achy leg feeling you get when you're walking around all day at the tech tour? I mean, all this new tech is so exciting. When I came across these guys, I had to come and try it out. This is Animo, which is a hydrotherapy compression recovery unit. And right now, my legs feel like they're in heaven. There's cold water just sort of moving the blood up from my ankles and yeah, it just feels good. But apparently it's got six different chambers, so you can shut off different areas if you need one area to be worked more. You can set it onto massage setting. You can have it warm if you want. Maybe if you live in the UK and you want your legs to feel nice and massage. It's coming out pretty soon from Coru Performance, so keep an eye for this. Well, whilst I've been sat with my feet up, I was taking a look at some of the other products that Coru Performance have. And this one apparently came out in February. It's their endurance lotion, which is designed to basically help buffer lactic acid. So it's got sodium bicarbonate in, and they claim it's four times more effective than other ones on the market. You've probably seen similar products in the past that are designed for training and racing and just helping to reduce the effects almost of lactic acid. And it's a nice lotion, apparently easily absorbed and up to 80 minutes water resistance. So it can come in pretty handy for your swim training too. Okay, well, we hope you've enjoyed that tech tour. We certainly enjoyed it, seen all the new tech, uh, a lot to take in there. If you've enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a like and subscribe to the channel for more tech and everything triathlon.